Well, obviously, uh, in the in the role that, that we fulfil, uh, we're heavily into the digital learning sort of arena, and we're definitely witnessing a you know, degree of, I think, anticipation and, and possibly even confusion around that subject in terms of, you know, what does that mean, digital learning, what's good, what's bad, how do you integrate it into a broader learning program or learning culture, um, what are the threats, what are the fads, what's going to sustain, you know, all of those kind of questions we're dealing with almost on a daily basis, I would say. So in terms of changing job roles, I think having um, a greater degree of um, digital awareness uh, and uh, curiosity, I suppose, but in a positive way, um, to understand how to explore those different options um, and how to maybe not spend a lot of money on exploring those options, but still release good content into an organisation, if you like. I think some of the fear is holding us back from making decisions. Um, and I think there's a concern that it's going to be very expensive or very difficult to interface with and to use. Um, or to measure, you know, all those kind of things. And I think little bite-size uh, projects, uh, from our experience, certainly are helping people to get confident quickly that most of their concerns actually um, are easy to deal with, let's say. So, you know, I think this whole subject is fascinating, really, and I think to have real insight and brains um, directing, if you like, or thinking about how to integrate digital into the workplace from a learning perspective, uh, it's probably where I would be trying to recruit if I were, you know, in charge of learning in a large or any sort of organisation. I think. So, the role of L and D to challenge people's perceptions. I think it needs to challenge its own perceptions. If we're talking about L and D as a cohort, um, you know, as a profession within but distinct from the business in some ways. Um, so first of all, to, to possibly uh, explore and, and get our hands dirtier with, with what is out there and what's possible. Um, and I think also, you know, we talked earlier about this sort of concept of upward mentoring is to actually uh, become more relaxed with not knowing, really. You know, I, I, I was running a, a, a little session for some teachers the other day, primary school teachers. And just for fun, I said, you know, who has to ask their child how to turn the television on nowadays? And actually three quarters of the hands went up. Uh, <laughs> you know, so I think um, kind of relax about not knowing what's going on in totality, because we never will, and it's going to change anyway. Um, but get some of that feedback and those insights from people that are more confident to give it. In terms of curated content, um, Who's the curator, I suppose? That's the question, isn't it? In you know, I suppose the traditional sense, there is a man or a woman that looks after the museum that decides what artifacts go into it. Um, but we're not talking about a museum anymore, are we? I think we're talking about a very organic live, updated by the second um, world when it comes to information. So I think it should be pretty self-governing, personally. Um, there's some good platforms out there now, some good content management systems that have a degree of AI in them and you know, machine learning. Um, and you know, and they'll operate a little bit like your Amazons, and you know, they recommend content that sort of seems to fit your profile, or, or, or even to an extent, the kind of comments you put in free text. If you've got an, you know an instant messaging type service, so there's some smart stuff going on out there. Um, but I'd relax a little bit. I think the more we curate things, the worse they get. I was asked recently at a, at a talk. Um, you know, how, how do we get people interested in this, in this learning? You know, it's quite dry, it's very technical. And, and my thought was, well, how do you get people interested in Netflix? How do you get people interested in Sauvignon Blanc? We sort of don't have to try very hard because it's already nice and it's already good. Uh, <laughs> the more you try and control that, the worse it gets. Um, so let people go wild. Trust them, I think probably is what we're saying. I think if it's intuitively signposted, if that makes sense. So in other words, if someone with absolutely no technical ability or experience, let's say, can find something that they find relevant easily, um, then I think that's more, more important than controlling the amount of content. 
there's some decent content management systems out there now that are using a degree of machine learning to help us with that, you know, so in the same way as you know, Amazon now is spamming me with adverts for sandals because I bought some the other day. Um, they're very attractive sandals, I might add. Um, so there's, you know, I think with improvements in, in AI and machine learning, that, that side of things, that content can be channeled to an extent based on our profiles and our, and our behaviours. Um, but I'm also sort of fairly open-minded about sort of happy um, accidents when we're coming to learning. So I love Ted for that reason, for example. So Ted will send me a video a week. And quite often I think it's content that I'm not that interested in. It could be anything, as you know. Um, but almost always after 15 minutes of watching that video, I'm interested in that content. And I didn't know I didn't know that stuff. And I didn't know I was going to be interested in it. Um, so I think push notifications like that, that actually encourage sometimes very tailored, but also sometimes slightly random subject matter are cool. And I just think it needs to be easy to navigate. I'd be really skeptical about controlling content in that sense. Just get people to sort of in, encourage it. Um, and for, from a really practical standpoint, from, from my background as a project manager, leave enough time at the front end of things to really explore. I think because our time management is poor and our discipline is poor, we tend to launch headfirst into the next thing because it's there and it's in front of us and we need to get on with it. Um, so on a really practical level, leave five times as much time at the start of a project than you usually would and, and almost ban solutions for the first week. You know, anyone that comes up with a solution gets put in the naughty corner or something and just encourage and make people ask open questions. Yeah, the, 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 the five W's and the H or whatever it is. Um, play games. Yeah, you're not allow, allowed to ask a closed question. You know, again, otherwise you go on the naughty step. Yep. Why, who, where, when, all those questions really encourage them.